In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Dear brothers and sisters, in this, the second Sunday of Advent, we are presented with this amazing figure of St. John the Baptist, who was sent to prepare the way for the Messiah. And in today's Gospel, from the Gospel of St. Matthew, when St. John the Baptist was in prison and had heard of the works of Christ, sending two of his disciples, he put this question to Jesus. Art thou he that art to come, or look we for another? It's important to know that St. John the Baptist doesn't actually doubt that Jesus is the Messiah. But knowing that some of his disciples doubt it, he sends them to Jesus so that Jesus himself will tell them so that his disciples can believe. Every pious and devout Jew would have known the scriptures and would have known the passages that speak about the Messiah. In fact, in today's epistle from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the apostle to the Gentiles himself quotes one of these passages from the prophet Isaiah, which we've just heard. There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise up to rule the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. This was a prophecy on the Messiah in relation to the Gentiles. But there was also a prophecy from Isaiah on his works, on him working miracles from Isaiah chapter 35 verse 4 to 6 which says I quote God himself will come and will save you then shall the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped then shall the lame man leap as a heart and the tongue of the dumb shall be free end quote and in Jesus' response to the disciples of St. John the Baptist, what does he say? Jesus said to them, Go and relate to John what you have heard and seen. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead rise again, the poor have the gospel preached to them. So the works, the miracles that were prophesied about regarding the Messiah are being done by Jesus. Therefore, he is the Messiah. So they need not doubt any longer. And blessed is he that is not scandalized in me, Jesus said. Which means, who shall not take occasion of scandal or offense from Jesus' humility and the disgraceful death of the cross which he shall endure. So they should have known the prophecy of Isaiah. Jesus then goes on to praise St. John the Baptist, telling, him, telling them that he is more than a prophet. He is the one whom it was written, Behold, I send my angel before thy face, who shall prepare thy way before thee. St. John the Baptist was so holy let us remember he was sanctified in his mother's womb, freed from original sin through the mediation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He is the precursor, the one who is to prepare Israel, the spouse, for Jesus, the bridegroom. Now the sacred liturgy wants to prepare us as well. There is a prayer to Saint Joseph, which you can say um, before Mass, which I'd like to just read some of the words to you. You can say before Mass and before Holy Communion. It goes like this. O blessed Joseph, happy man, to whom it was given not only to see and to hear that God, whom many kings longed to see and saw not, to hear and heard not, but also to carry him in thine arms, to embrace him. O God, we beseech thee, that as blessed Joseph was found worthy 
to touch with his hands and to bear in his arms thine only begotten Son, so may we be made fit by cleanness of heart and blameless of life to minister at thy holy altar. And may we this day partake with reverent devotion of the sacred body and blood of thine only begotten Son. Last week we spoke about the twofold coming of Christ, when Christ comes as a child and when he comes in glory at the end of time to judge the living and the dead. But we could also speak about a threefold coming of Christ, the coming of Jesus by grace. The truth is, dear brothers and sisters, Jesus already came and he is already here. God is on earth. God is in the Eucharist. So let us think about that prayer to St. Joseph, how the prophets longed to see him and did not see him, how St. Joseph held God in his arms. We receive God, Jesus, in Holy Communion. Think about that. We are in a certain sense like the Blessed Virgin Mary at the Annunciation after she, after she said yes, when she had God inside her. Just think about that. In comparison with all the prophets that existed before, you have God inside you, Almighty God. Let us reflect on that, dear brothers and sisters. So we have to prepare also for Jesus in Holy Communion. Imagine preparing your house for the coming of a special guest, doing some spring cleaning. Well, dear brothers and sisters, Jesus will enter your soul, will enter your heart. And let us pray to the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is the one who can help prepare us for the coming of Christ at Christmas, for the coming of Christ at the end of time, and also for Holy Communion. Let us pray to imitate the Blessed Virgin Mary at the Annunciation. We can pray particularly the joyful mysteries during this season of Advent. And when contemplating the mysteries of the Holy Rosary, let us pray to imitate what takes place in those scenes in our own life. Ask our Lord to grant us the grace to live as he lived and, ask, and to live how Our Lady lived. Ask above all to be faithful to God, imitating the Virgo Fidelis, the Virgin Most Faithful, whose Immaculate Heart was a dwelling place for God before God became incarnate in her womb. She was always open to listen to the Word of God, to give her yes, her fiat, to fulfill his plan. And dear brothers and sisters, God has a plan for each one of us. He wants us all to be spotless, and without blemish. He wants each one of us to become saints. He wants our hearts to be like a tabernacle for the Blessed Sacrament, a heart that loves Jesus in the Eucharist all throughout its days, and a heart that loves him above all things. So dear brothers and sisters, prepare well for this season of Advent that the Church gives to us, this time of preparation, and let us desire to be like Our Lady at the Annunciation and to treasure that moment when we receive Holy Communion, when we have God in us. Think of how special that is, that God, Almighty God, gives himself to you in Holy Communion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.